Good morning, everybody. This session is going to be in, in, in Spanish because we have a, <laughs> an incredible panel here. So, vamos a pasar al, al español. So, we're going to move to English with the representatives from Latin America. We have Gonzalo, who is a Chilean, who will be speaking to us about the challenges we have in the region on the beat system. And Gina from Mexico, who will talk to us about diversity and development of human potential, and Marcela about the need for a geographical uh, diversity and inclusion. And my name is Facundo de Rodon. I am a national uh, member of parliament, very involved with Social Lab. And we have seen for a number of years now in Latin America a new development and new movement, especially among the young of people who are trying to uh, generate a greater impact. And that greater impact looks for providing benefits to society, not so much for an economic profit, but a benefit in quality of life. And we have seen all of these organizations, System B, Agora, Social Lab, and so on, who are looking for creating a better world, but with different models. That is, inclusive models, those who look for solving the big problems of the world, but also development of companies generating this double or triple impact. To do so, some of this has been uh, being developed by Gonzalo with Triciclos. I would love for you to tell us what Triciclos does. Thank you, Facundo. Thank you for your invitation. Triciclos is a B company uh, working on circular economy in the world of packaging. So we say that trash is a design mistake, and we have to understand everything from the origin of the design to the end and taking into advance into account every everybody to uh, uh, help those who are gathering trash and so on. Uh, the purpose is to create a, an economy with an econom uh, circular and inclusive society. I understand you are linked to B system, Sistema B. For those who don't know what it is about, can you tell us what it is? Indeed, I had the privilege of co-founding Sistema B, and Triciclo was the first B company outside the U.S. We used it as an example for expanding the B Corps, and the companies are legally bound to change. So beside having a financial re uh, result, they must have a social result that can be demanded. We can change uh, the success in business, not only in a business um, uh, result, but also a well-being for the society and for the planet. Taking into account that model, this inclusion model, uh, with a different system which is much more fair and much better distributed. Gina is doing something similar in Mexico, looking to develop the human potential, especially inclusion, right? Why don't you tell us what you do in Mexico with the foundation, what this is will Thank you. My fight is to have an inclusive Mexico to see the potential of people. I started 10 years ago with a foundation, Eyes That Feel, Ojos Que Sienten, to work on disabilities and on handicapped people. And four years ago, we started with a spin-off, a social company, for a widespread, which is the potential, looking for the potential of people who people who are not being seen for what they know, what they are, and if we manage to introduce some changes so that they may be inclusive in the social system, I'm sure we will get a social and economic mobility, and that is our fight. About uh, these uh, inclusion program, why don't you tell us what your original uh, problem is, uh, how is that feel? Well, I am a photographer, and I wanted to 
break a little bit of the conversation and, and trying to search for the people with uh, that are visually impaired, I tried to work on photo because I thought, how come blind people are making pictures? The answer is if you see the potential of the handicapped people and you see what they do, they feel, they listen and they want to be included in a conversation who is fully visual. That is how we started by disrupting this conversation. Okay. That person doesn't see, but they have other strongholds, and we created a movement that starts with the picture taking photographs, and people are then included, and now the companies start to see the abilities of these people. We have managed to include them in companies for them to be independent. We have uh, worked very hard on that. We are talking about the abilities, not the handicap. And people who are handicapped, we are not uh, working on. So how is our Latin American region today regarding inclusion with this kind of disability? I understand some countries do have some regulations where the private companies have regulation to include a percentage of workers with people with different abilities. How does our region work in this? Well, in Mexico, we're just starting where they try to put quotas, but what they do now is force companies who have more than 50 people working with them for the uh, facilities to be fully accessible for these people. We have created that conscience, that awareness, but I'm sure quotas will start, the invitation, and what I'm trying to do is make sure that this population has a number of abilities, but you first have to train them. So why don't we start training them with Energy 20, with Unilever, we started this uh, initiative to train the talent and then include them. That is our fight together. There is a need, there's a greater and greater demand of the companies to be including these talents because we know it's an asset, it's not philanthropy. But of course you have to do something before that is to train them in certain areas. And why don't we focus on a the resiliency it tends to be creative, proactive and so on. That's where the big opportunity lies. Marcela, in your case, you're working in Argentina, right? With some greater challenges for our region, which is the migration to people to the big cities and leaving the small towns empty. Why don't you tell us a little bit what you do? The case of Argentina is an example of things that happen throughout our region in Latin America. In Argentina, 70% of the um, cities have less than 2,000 inhabitants. 70%. In other words, Argentina is a, com a country of rural villages, but there are 17 cities and 30% of the population lives in 0.14% of the territory. So we have a big unbalance, imbalance with very little development and there are no opportunities for people to understand that there are uh, economic opportunities and they migrate to the big cities. And uh, this is a problem with two faces. Uh, maybe you don't mind that uh, little villages become empty, but we see that, that the big cities are absolutely unlivable with so many people that don't even know where to live and how to be included. So that is the problem we have been working on. We started in 2000 uh, with a difficult context that became even worse. In spite of that, we discovered through mappings of sustainability of each of the villages in Argentina, the po potential we have, and that is our mission. Through a tourism program, also a cultural program, also teaching jobs, there is an Argentina that is waiting. If you ask me later on, I'll tell you what we're doing. From that standpoint, we saw that some people are spot working on generating this impact. They're doing that bottom up. Now, what is being done from top down? Each country is implementing uh, 
public policies to solve uh, environmental problems, as the case of triciclo diversity, as is the case of eyes that feel, or your case with the foundation that is uh, searching for this distribution. Is is something being done? Is there a cooperation from the government? Gonzalo, you said something that is being done in Chile, which is a combination of not only the government, but the companies are actively participating. Is that right? Mm, indeed. I think that the first thing, as has been said, is the organization. It is looking for a social impact. And that organization has to be self-sustainable. Then it is part of a segment. For example, each of us is working in a segment. And we have to make sure it works properly. But then there is the country, as a country, as a dimension. And what we're saying before is this. In Chile, there is a very interesting case. We have an initiative that is called Three Times I. Forty of the most important companies in Chile with their owners, as called upon by the Chamber of Commerce, 25 of the main founders working on poverty, some of the most, the biggest uh, innovators, some of the people representing the B companies and B corporations and academia to work together on uh, getting a new dream for the country, stemming from the need to restore confidence. And that example is, I'm sure, something that should be happening everywhere because I think we have a trust crisis, a confidence trust, where everybody is looking inward and within each sector, each of them tends to look inward. So now we have to generate this confidence space to understand that we're all living on the same boat even some other species, and nobody will be able to save his or her life on his own. So considering the problems we have, the people around it, we have to generate a space where we meet and a space where we are ready to trust, to get integrated, so as to really place innovation at the helm. Do you see that possibility can be scalable to Latin America to generate a, a clear cons conscience throughout the country or an awareness with this uh, possibility of having come vision? We, absolutely. This was started two months ago. The first gen uh, meeting was on March 20, and it was long ago that we didn't see all of the media working posit uh, talking positively. There were no criticisms. It was positive for everybody. So we expect that example not only to be scalable in Chile, in Chile, but also to become an invitation for the state to intervene. Which public policies should be done and what should these policies do? And we have to carry out these cross-sectoral alliances where we have a common country and a common planet. It would be, I take advantage of this, saying that System B wants for a simple law to be valid for the whole uh, Latin America that started in the Congress, that is the shared benefits. It's a model of B Corps that we hope will be replicated throughout the region. Can you talk us a little bit? Well, today in the world, there are some 2,100 B Corps that are certified. And we have 33 states where it has become a law. In other words, people are bound by that, not only with certain promotion elements for the companies, but it has to, they have to identify the systems as having a purpose beyond profitability. Argentina is one of the countries in the region that is, is uh, uh, leading the big law. Chile the same, Colombia the same. We are starting in Mexico, in Brazil, Australia, and already 55 countries in the world have B Corps. And in all these countries, we are generating links with the legislative to make sure we enact a law under this and then we really find what success means in the world of business and let's forget about the good guys the bad guys we're all on the same in the same boat and if we 
dig a little bit, we will see that we have common dreams, common needs, and that we have to open that and to find the human being behind that, because that is what unites us. In the case of Mexico, Gina, what's the situation? Is the government uh, promoting that kind of initiatives? Are there companies that are linked to the third sector? Well, uh, we see the model where the third sector and the government get together. Now, who starts? Well, that varies. In my case, it started through the private sector that joined with the third sector, and then we call on the government. But that varies from country to country. That's how it went in our case. We went with the company to tell them what is the value we're giving. Because we are in a stage where we don't have the good guys and the bad guys anymore, but that we have a reality that must be revisited to say what is good and what is not good, what are the needs, what are the social impacts that we're looking for. In our case, it has been this. What is the value that can be given to the company? We see every day more entrepreneurs working inside companies that are really having an influence in the supply chain, in the process, not only in a philanthropic from social responsibility, but in the process. Of course, we have to add the government to scale up and to have a greater impact. In my case, it has been through the private sector. We joined the third sector, other NGOs, other foundations, and we then call upon the government and say, hey, we've settled the whole thing. How don't you, why don't you join us and we scale together? Because then we cannot go everybody on their own course. And if I see a change from 10 years ago, when I started Eyes That Feel, I did it as a foundation because we don't, didn't have a social entrepreneur, but it is a self-sustainable mother. That's why it has been acknowledged as a social endeavor, but that we did see changes. Do you think there is a trend uh, in the region taking into account these new entrepreneurs that are m ever more active? The new mil millennia, mil millennia. Do you see there is a regional trend to generate these models that are not only a foundation looking to solve the big problems that has also a business model behind that generates some profit as well and therefore gives sustainability? I think it has been a shift moving towards social endeavor. The foundation becomes every day more a vehicle for some actions, for some profiles, for some cases that can be pushed. And we see a shift towards a social endeavor, social entrepreneurship. We have more and more social entrepreneurs and not so many foundations or the hybrids. I'm one of the hybrids. The, I'm a foundation, but then there is a greater need where the vehicle of the foundation, both legal and structural, was too small, and we needed a bigger one. And I think this is being seen. In the case of Argentina as a foundation, do you, you know the uh, complexity for entrepreneur? Can you tell us uh, how difficult it was for you? Well, I would say that it isn't that difficult to un be entrepreneur and to innovate. The problem is to remain over time. When I started 17 years ago, the first 12 years were particularly difficult to work with the government. The companies were the ones that helped us and individuals. At any rate, in our society, there is not too much of a philanthropic culture that has been really set up. So people are, the companies are not really available to give you your time and their money. And when you talk about money, then the pockets are not that deep. Uh, in spite of that, we managed to make some headway, but in those countries where they have a big inflation, like the one we saw in Argentina in 2012, plus when there is not a regulatory framework that enables the companies to pay, and if you add to that the fact 
that uh, as a non not for profit organization you have the same taxes and responsibility with the state when you hire human resources and set up uh, uh, teams it is difficult and to be able to sustain that and to pr make some headway is difficult however when you say hey why don't we join with others to be stronger well in our case three years ago we started together with Uh, two other uh, local NGOs under the umbrella of a Swiss foundation, the first repopulation project in Argentina. We're doing that in the province of Santa Fe in a village. When we said we want to do this project, 2,000 families registered and we only needed 20. We were going to take 20 entrepreneur families in Rosario Santa Fe to develop that in a village. The project is uh, being developed for more than a year with a big success. The difficult part is now to knock upwards a little. Now there are more people, now there are four organizations. But there is an urgency context where there's no long, mid and long term vision which is needed everywhere in Latin America, but they are desperate by the short term. And that is why I believe that these uh, funding models for uh, social entrepreneurs are not really very well developed. And they're not clear. And I think the millennium entrepreneurs, well, there has been a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, many solutions that have are proven. And the entrepreneur is uh, falls somewhere in the middle. Considering that and what happens at a regional level, now, worldwide, how does Latin America score when compared to other parts of the world when we talk about ecosystems with entrepreneurs that are really pushed by this double or triple impact? Gonzalo, what is your perspective of our region vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world? Is there innovation? Is there technology? Do we have some kind of an impact? Well, I think that Latin America is an area with its big challenges, big problems, which are easy to be seen. We have, for example, a big uh, problem with inequity. We have a pr problem that we have so many good natural resources that are being degraded. In other words, what we've seen from a social entrepreneurship perspective is not different from Asia or Africa in terms of needs and entrepreneurship. What is surprising in the world of social for-profit entrepreneurship, Latin America has had a very relevant role. Uh, Chile is the uh, country with the highest number of uh, B Corps per people. Uh, Argentina has also been leading and the changes of um, Argentina in B Corps has been fantastic. And Colombia, same thing. So some uh, countries have a, uh, um, I can do the two things at the same time. Why? Is this a generational problem? Why do you think this is like that? It's difficult because it's multi -variable. In terms of a generation, we have, I think, That is a global issue. I think the new generations have a different sensibility vis-à-vis -vis the previous one, and most of those in this room, we did have serious problems in our education and training in terms of setting our lines uh, in a linear, excluding and monodimensional economy where all that counted was to make money, whereas now we're talking about a multidimensional, inclusive circular economy. And that, for the new generations, is something that they find more natural to understand. In addition, it happens that in our countries, we have the possibility to come into contact with uh, the power sectors, leaving Brazil aside, which is a continent. But that can be achieved. In the other countries, we don't find it that difficult to reach decision makers and those that can make big changes. So those spaces, like the ones Gina just mentioned, allow you to involve the social entrepreneurship sector with civil society, big companies, and reach the state with a proposal. That's something that is happening, and it's feasible in our countries. Our countries have that virtue. We have five minutes left. I'd like to take two questions from the audience. Are there microphones available? Any other question while we wait for the mic? 
Thank you. I'm Rafael Arauzo from Mexico. We, Facundo was referring to the potential we have with all the millennials uh, to have a triple impact. Which do you think is the main challenge for social entrepreneurship so it becomes a mainstream activity? What are the main challenges? Very well. Let's take the other question. I'm Margarita, Italian from the Cordoba hub. You know the B Corp system very well, but even if those companies are sustainable, they do not have the economic or operational model to scale up their models in other countries, since uh, that can only be achieved by traditional for-profit companies. And my question is about the IP projection. How could we promote this system? As soon as they know that a B system, a B corp cannot be scaled up, how can you disseminate information and about their model? Based on the experience I've had working with uh, the private sector and social enterprises, I see this as a dance. You have to find the right rhythm. And uh, it's not either or, but it's a complement. To become mainstream, there are interests, cultural changes that need to be made in companies. And I, al I always invite other social entrepreneurs to understand the needs of companies and how the world moves and what's happening in the social world. So we need to find common ground so that we can develop this concept and make it mainstream. I wouldn't say that uh, social entrepreneurship um, will become the only way in which things can be done. We have to supplement each other in today's world. And let me make a comment here. Ultimately, an entrepreneur seeks opportunities, and in that search for opportunities to solve big problems is where the biggest opportunities lie. Latin America is full of problems, so an opportunity is to find solutions to each one of those problems. If we manage to turn the solution to those big word problems with a business model that's sustainable over time, that would be that perfect dance that Gina is referring to, combining a business that ends up being for profit but it's ultimately finding solutions for the big problems of the world. And I think those are the new challenges and new world trends. And I believe all millennials are born focused on that. Let me refer to the second question. First, we need to understand what scaling up means, because there are different dimensions to scaling up. And the more natural one is to say, I want to take this to all regions and countries in the world. That's one dimension. Another dimension to scaling up is finding a solution, taking a solution somewhere, myself or with others. And another dimension is scaling up in terms of depth of what you're doing. And that's also feasible. When you say, I don't want to move elsewhere, I want to deepen the impact in the place where I operate. Those are the three dimensions in which we understand the system B has to move, scaling up in all dimensions. Now, when you're a company, you have to respect the fact that there are companies that want to scale up in a global dimension and others that want to scale up by deepening their impact. In the case of B Corps, generally speaking, what you said at the beginning is real. Of the 2,100 B Corps in the world, most are SMEs small companies, not all of them have the possibility to scale up. Their challenge is to respect the values with which they were created and manage to have a triple impact. And, and now I'm speaking in my capacity as the BILA Board of Directors member in the US. And in the last 10 years, we managed to create an infrastructure. That infrastructure was created based on SMEs. Our challenge is to scale up to becoming mainstream without losing our integrity and our values. Today, we are laying bridges with multinational companies like Unilever, Danone, that are doing a great job in certifying their subsidiaries. But in addition, there are 60,000 companies in the world that are using the B Impact Assessment Tool to understand their impact, to measure themselves, and start measuring their outcomes in terms of the triple impact. That's allowing other small and medium-sized companies to scale up in different dimensions, geographically in some cases, and in terms of depth in others. As regards IP, that's 
collaborative economy. And that's integrated into the rationale of B Corps. And a B company or any other company might say, my knowledge is so important that I won't dare to take it elsewhere. And others will say, I want to use open source and I want to, everyone to know this. There are countless alternatives and options. There are many gray areas. But I think this is the world of collaborative economics which we need to embrace and enhance. Very well, to respect the time assigned to our session, let me thank this panel. I am convinced that we are in the right track. I'm convinced that Latin America will lead this movement because of the characteristics it has, considering all the opportunities available, considering the entrepreneurs we have and the social sensitivity we have. So. Thank you very much and congratulations for your work.